In this video, we're going to make a really simple but really nice wind shader effect. You can easily apply this to grass, leaves, trees, or really just about anything you want to make it sway back and forth. There's also exposed parameters to play around with the intensity of the wind. Let's begin! Okay, so here let's check out how to make a very simple grass wind shader effect. Now this is really simple to do and it will really make your game stand out. For example, here in my scene I have my basic player character and there's some random bushes in the world. Everything looks way too static which makes it quite uninteresting. So let's make our bushes sway back and forth with the wind. By the way, I also use this exact effect in my course for the Builder Defender game. The course is 10 hours long with over 50 lectures nicely organized into distinct topics. It teaches you everything on how to make a game starting completely from scratch until the final polished game. The lectures are all presented as clear step-by-step -step tutorials just like these normal videos. It teaches you about how to make a building system, resource management, enemy AI, world building, post-processing, polish, and much, much more. So if you're looking for a guided step-by-step -step course on making a complete game from start to finish, then check the link in the description to pick up the course. Alright, so let's make it. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. On the project files, let's right click, go into create, we're going to create a shader, and in this case go into the 2D renderer, and we're going to create a sprightly graph. However, everything we're going to do works the same in any other graph, so if you were working on a 3D game, it will work pretty much exactly the same. Let's name it wind effect. Now here's a quick tip for making a material using a shader. Instead of right clicking on top of a folder or something, right click directly on top of the shader and go into create, create a material and it will automatically create using that shader. So just a very simple quick tip. So just this for our wind effect. And now all of these bushes in my case are set up inside prefabs. So just open up the prefabs and inside this is just a normal sprite render. So just apply the wind effect material. Okay, I've applied the material to all of the different grass types. However, right now we can't really see anything. We just see some white blobs. So let's open up the shader, so double click. And in here, hit shift space in order to make our shader graph full screen. And now in here, if you're not familiar with shader graph, check out my quick getting started video. It will teach you the absolute basics. Now in here, the first thing we want to make is make our basic visual. So we need a basic texture, so a new texture 2D for the main text. And with the reference underscore main text. And let's default it to one of these bushes. Then we just drag the texture. We need to sample it. And then we pass in the colors into the color field. All right, that's it. Let's also enable the main preview and right click and swap it onto a quad. All right, that's it. Let's hit save. And yep, we have all of our nice static bushes. Okay, so far so good. Now, the way we're going to make this sway back and forth is by moving the vertices. So if we go back into the scene view, in here, you have a little drop down menu, so you click on it, and instead of shaded, we can select wireframe. And if we do, now we can see the actual vertices that make up each of our meshes. So down here, let's zoom into this bush, and you can see all of these tiny vertices. So if you go back into shaded, yep, there you go. And if we go into wireframe, yep, there it is, we can see all of the vertices. Now, since this effect will be based on moving vertices, it's very important for the mesh to actually have these vertices. So if we go into the sprite import settings, here it is, and yep, it's a normal sprite. And in here you can see a field for the mesh type. So you have two options, tight or full rect. So if you select tight, it will create a complex mesh with the shape of the visual sprite. Or you can set it to full rect, hit apply, and there you go, now it just takes the shape of a normal quad. So again, since this effect will be based on moving vertices, we want as many vertices as possible. So in order to make this work, we need to make sure that we are using tight, and there you go, we have all these vertices. All right, so back in the shader. Over here on the master node, we can see a parameter for the vertex position. So this will impact the position of each specific vertex. And now the way that we get that position, the position that is in there by default, let's just add the position node. And okay, here it is. Then on this drop down menu, we can choose which space we want to use. So you can get the world space position, which will give you the absolute position of the vertices in the world space or we can choose object for the actual positions only in the object local space, which is what this one uses by default. So if we connect this one to this one, nothing changes since that's what was already being used. But in our case, yep, that's what we want. We want the object and we just want to play around with this. So we can test to see what this is doing. Let's create an add node and we're going to add this position and let's set it just by one on the X and then use this as our vertex position. And right away in there, you can see that the sprite shifted to the right. 
and if we save, there it is, every sprite is slightly moving to the right. You can see compared with the shadow position, so every one of those has moved to the right by one unit. So that's what modifying the object space position does. It modifies the actual position of each vertex. So with this, you can already imagine how we're going to achieve this effect. We just need to apply some swaying movement over here to our object space position. Now, the way we make them sway back and forth is using some really nice scrolling noise. So let's position this correctly, place the collar down here since we're not going to touch the collar. And now up here, let's add node of gradient noise. So there you go, you can see that. Now again, always remember that colors really equal numbers. So in here on the black, we have zero and on the white, we have one. So we have noise going from zero to one. And now if we take this and we add this to our add node, in there you can see that all of the vertices moved according to the value on the noise gradient. So by modifying the scale, you can see, yep, there you go, it's changing quite a lot. And again, this goes from zero to one, that is why that one is shifted to the right and up by one on each side. However, in order to do that, we're not going to modify the scale, but rather the UV in here, which will make a scrolling texture. So in order to see this in action, let's add a time node. So this one has various parameters related to the time. So the first one is just a constantly increasing float. So we can take this and connect this into the UV2. And if there to go, now we can see that it's constantly moving. However, with this, we are shifting all the vertices by exactly the same amount. So let's sample the gradient noise on different positions depending on the object space. So let's actually move this and make another one in here. And we add these two and then sample the gradient noise. So now each vertex is grabbing a different position from the gradient. Now if you want, you can play around in here with the scale of the noise if you want more or less separate areas on each vertex. So for example, if we put it less, there you go, it looks much more smooth. And if we put it in insane, then it looks, well, insane. So just like this, looks pretty good. So if we save and look, and if there it is, we have all of our bushes swaying indeed back and forth. However, you can obviously see the issue, which is they are swaying, but they are swaying on the X, on the Y, and also on the Z. So over here in the scene view, in a 3D view, we can actually see what is going on. So each vertex is being moved up, down, left, right, and front and back. However, in our case, we really only want to move on the X. We don't want to touch the Y and the Z, so let's do that. Over here on the object position, Instead of adding onto all of them, what we're going to do is we take this, we make a split node, and that will split that vector three into our three components. And now in here it says RGB, but in reality this represents X, Y, Z. So again, we only want to apply it to the X. So we take our add node, instead of using all of them, we just take the X. So we just add onto the X, okay? And then we need to combine them back. So combine, use the X that we call it in here, and the original Y and the original Z. And now we place all of these in there. And there you go, now it does only sway back and forth on the X axis. So yep, you can now see the effect in action and now they're only going left and right. All right, so far so good. Now the one issue that we can see right away in here is that it's really only swaying in one direction. So when the noise is at zero, then the vertex is on its normal position. And when the noise is at one, then it goes to the right. We want it to sway both left and right. So solving that is a very simple fix. Over here we have our green noise, and like I said, the noise goes from 0 to 1. So if we wanted to go left and right, then we can just take this, and we just add a subtract node, and we just take this and subtract it by 0.5. So now instead of going from 0 to 1, it will go from minus 0.5 to plus 0.5. So we take this and use it, and there you go, now it is in the center and goes left and right. Alright, so far so good. Now the other thing is the effect might be a bit too intense. Obviously that's going to depend on the scale of your game. But if you want to modify that, we just add a multiply node and we take this and multiply this by a certain value and then we add it. So with this with two, now the wind is very intense. If we put it at 10, it's even more intense. And if we put it at something like 0.5, then now it's much more smooth. So now we can even make this an exposed property. So in here, let's make a vector one for the wind intensity. Let's default to 2.5. Let's make a mode a nice slider so we can play around with. Let's make it from that to something like five and just drag it and this is what we use in here. So if we test, so there's the wind effect, very smooth, very small. And in here we have the wind intensity and as we increase, if there you go, now it's a lot more intense. And as we decrease, and now there's no wind and there's a little bit and a lot. So we have a real nice property that we could easily set through code if we wanted our game to have some dynamic wind. Okay, so this is looking good. However, we have one serious issue, which is right now the whole sprite is moving, but the bottom of the sprite is meant to be connected to the ground, so we don't want that to move. Essentially, we want it not to move at the bottom and move a lot the higher we go on the sprite. So first, we need some sort of mask for that effect. So with that, we can add a simple UV node. 
So there you go, we have our UV. And now we can take this and split this. And again, this says RGB, but in reality, this means XYZ. And in here from this gradient, let's take the Y, which is the G. And we can easily visualize what we have in here with a preview node. And yep, there it is. So as you can see, we have black in the bottom and white on the top. So essentially, it's going from 0 to 1. So this is exactly the mass that we want. And we just want to multiply this by our actual effect. So let's move all this a bit to the side, get a bit more space. And then in here, we add a multiply node. We multiply this gradient by the output of here. And then we add it onto there. And yep, there we go. Now we have the effect exactly as we want it. So down here, it doesn't move at all. And up here, it moves a lot. All right, so this is pretty much the complete effect. Let's save and test. And yep, there it is. All of them are working exactly as intended. So at the bottom, there's no movement. As we move up, there's more movement. Now another property we can add is for the wind speed. So the wind speed is essentially over here, the scale in our gradient noise. So as we increase this, yep, there you go. It moves a lot more, a lot more intense. So let's make this a property. So we have the wind speed property and we just use it in here. And yep, there it is. Now we have our property. So let's increase the wind speed. And there you go. Yep, now it moves a lot more. And we can also modify the intensity. And yep, there you go. We have a very customizable, very nice looking wind. Okay, so this is working. However, there's one slight issue in here. Here, if I duplicate this and place a whole bunch of wind effects right next to each other. And in there, you can see the issue. When you've got sprites that look exactly the same right next to each other, they all have the exact same wind speed. So as this one moves to the right, that one also moves to the right. Now, wind in real life isn't actually like that. It doesn't apply the exact same effect on every single position in the world. Essentially, it sways along the world. So objects on different positions should sway a bit more different. So let's fix this. Now, the fix for that is extremely simple. We don't even need to add anything. Over here, we already add the position or to get the position of each vertex. And instead of using from object space, let's use it from world space. And yep, that's pretty much it. Now, if we want, we can also just take this and only apply it to the X. So we split it, we grab just the X and we add it on there. And depending on the scale of your game, this might not be enough in order to actually differentiate them. So then we just add a multiply node in order to make sprites that are physically very near, grab from different positions over here on our gradient. So just take this, multiply by a certain amount and then grab this. All right, so with this, let's test. And yep, it's working. So the effect is now slightly different on each object, making it look a bit more natural. And again, as we already saw, they're only using the same material and the shader automatically works with any texture. So all of these different textures, they're all working with the same material and they all have the really nice effect. Then, like I said, we expose these properties so we could play around with these through code and make the wind more intense in certain areas and a bit less intense in some other areas. So there you go, like this, a very subtle effect. And like this, it suddenly becomes way too intense. Here's our final scene looking a lot more dynamic than the static scene that we started with. So here it is, a very simple, very good looking shader effect. Again, this shader was originally created for the Complete Builder Defender course. So if you want to see how this is used as part of a complete game, go check out the course link in the description. It teaches you everything on how to make a game starting completely from scratch until the final polish the game. If you found this video helpful, consider liking and subscribing. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. As always, you can download the Project Fountain and Utilities from unitycodemonkey.com, subscribe to the channel for more Unity tutorials, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.